Hi there, I'm Ben Woodruff, and today's video we're talking about Thylacoleo, which is one of the coolest animals that's ever existed. This is an Ice Age Australian predator. It's been given the nickname the marsupial lion, even though it's not a true cat. Uh, in this video we're going to be talking more about it, how it lived, how it hunted, and why many scientists consider it to be the most specialized mammalian predator that has ever walked the earth. Now in order to understand Thylaco Leo, we need to understand the world it lived in. The Ice Age is recent enough that not a whole lot has changed. Every species of animal native to Australia that can be found there today was here during the Ice Age as well. Um, but there was many species that have gone extinct. Many giants. There were gigantic uh, wombats the size of minivans called diprotodonts. There were marsupial tapirs. There was a whole family of giant eight foot tall short faced kangaroos. And there was even a Komodo dragon four times as big as a modern Komodo dragon called Megalania. All of these animals, all of these Ice Age giants shared the world with Thylaco Leo. Now one of the most difficult parts about trying to understand Thylaco Leo is uh, what, trying to figure out what it actually looked like. The reason why this is difficult is there are no close living relatives to Thylaco Leo and uh, what normally happens artists will uh, base what they think of an animal off of something closely related. For example, uh, somebody familiar with living elephants would base that uh, familiarity when trying to depict a woolly mammoth. Well, with Thylaco Leo, there is nothing living that looks anything like it or hunts anything like it. And so all the artistic depictions are, are wildly different and none of them seem to be incredibly close. So in order to understand what it really looked like, we can't just guess, we have to go down to the bones to better understand how it lived and how it moved. So the first thing we have to understand when we're looking at the skeleton is what family it belongs to. Now, Thylaco Leo, um, <clears throat> again, is given the name the marsupial lion, but it's not a cat. It's not a lion at all. Uh, it is a predator, and we're going to take a look at this skull, but let's first take a look at another. This is an actual lion skull from a female lioness and uh, you take a look at the teeth there and you look at the shape of these teeth there's canines uh, and teeth up front for cutting and tearing and these back teeth are very jagged and this this is we know how a lion hunts and we know how they use their teeth now if we look closely at the teeth of Thylaco Leo at first they almost look rodent like these front teeth uh, almost have a chisel like appearance they overlap and uh, if we look underneath there at these teeth and their shape, very unusual for a supposed predator. And, but we have to understand the family lineage. Thylaco Leo comes from the macropod family, which is the wallabies, the kangaroos, and the wombats. Now, if we look at a skull of a modern day red kangaroo, and we look at these front teeth for grazing, these front teeth right here hold the key. And when we see how they look side by side. Now, the back teeth of a kangaroo are molars for grinding up the grass as they eat. But the front teeth are for cutting the grass. In the case of Thylaco Leo, the front teeth are still there, but instead of cutting grass, they're used, they're thicker now, and they're used for cutting flesh the back molars have turned into blades. The same thing on the front. The front chisel-like teeth are used for stabbing into flesh. They're much thicker than normal grazing teeth. And these back molars have turned into blades. And now they overlap. You can see how these teeth, these molars, overlap and they're just shears for cutting. Everything about this animal is built for stabbing and slicing. It does no chewing whatsoever. It doesn't have any teeth suitable for processing plant material in a way that's meaningful and, and, and valuable to the animal. But how did Thylaco Leo live? How did it hunt? Well, let's take a look at the rest of its body to understand. Now this is the hand of a modern day kangaroo. You can see five fingers 
and uh, five claws, no opposable thumb. The entire hand curves like this. They don't have an opposable thumb. Now, opossums do. Opossums can grip and they have a very versatile adjustable wrist so they can grab onto tree branches. Well, what we find in the front paws of Thylaco Leo are a couple of things. First of all, it has a shoulder blade that allows it to swipe so it can attack and claw this way. But very unusually, it has an opposable thumb and that opposable thumb has an, an enormously enlarged claw that was curved and used to grip. The other toes on Thylaco Leo are built very much like a lion. They're retractable, they have claws that can grip, but the inner thumbs that are opposable with the giant oversized claws look like they are a hunting tool. There is no other mammalian predator that grabs onto its prey with its thumbs and pierces it. There's nothing like that. So everything suggests that Thylaco Leo gripped with its front hands and pierced, used these front teeth, these chisel-like teeth to then uh, tear, disembowel, rip out the neck, we don't know, but somehow dispatch the prey once it had been grabbed with these front claws. And then these back shear teeth were used for cutting off chunks of meat and pulling out. Uh, a saber-toothed cat from North America during the Ice Age has very similar back teeth used to slice and pull off chunks of meat. But was it fast? Was it slow? The way the ligaments attach on the back legs suggests that Thylaco Leo was not particularly fast. This makes us think that it was it, it, uh, uh, maybe a stalking animal that would walk after and stalk its prey. Some have even suggested that it climbed trees and would drop down onto its prey. That's certainly possible. But we know that its front legs were very powerfully built and had a strong side swipe and strong ligaments to grab. But there's something else we need to look at, and that is its tail. Now the tail itself is not that particularly special. It's a long tail, it's powerfully built, but there's a clue. And the clue again comes from the kangaroo family that the Thylaco Leo came from. And that is on the bottom of the tail, there are these very special bones called chevrons. Now, these chevron bones have a gap and these connect on the bottom of the tail. And what that gap is for is for the blood vessels that normally run along the bottom of the tail. Now, most animals with tails let their tail just flow freely, but the kangaroo family will actually rear up on, their, on two legs and will rest their weight on the back of their tail. This puts those blood vessels at risk of getting damaged. So having these chevron bones underneath allows kangaroos to do that without damaging their blood vessels and, and to support basically their entire weight on their tail. Thylaco Leo has these same chevron bones. And so we believe that Thylaco Leo would also rear up on its back legs, support its weight on its tail, and then use those that powerful swipe of its arm and those huge thumb claws to attack its victims from a two-legged stance also supporting itself with its tail. Again, there's no other mammal predator that has ever used that type of a hunting technique. So when we read the bones, the picture that emerges is of a predator with a head roughly the size of a lioness, um, but with a bite much stronger, with the front teeth of a grazing herbivore, of a kangaroo, but beefed up to be able to pierce flesh instead of grass, back teeth that are like knives or shears that cut, front legs almost like a primate having much more strength, semi-arboreal, meaning they can climb trees, but a, a shoulder that allows for a strong swipe, giant thumbs that are opposable with enormous claws that can crunch prey, back legs that are powerfully built but not built for fast running, and a tail with chevron bones that allow them to rear up on their hind legs and grab like that from a two-legged position. This is a predator design that we don't see anywhere else in the world at any other time. Now, what did Thylaco Leo look like on the outside? We don't know. Uh, we, it's a mammal, it's a marsupial, we know it had fur, uh, but that's about as far as it goes. 
being a member of the macropod family, uh, kangaroos and wombats, most of them are pretty plain colored, but there are many that do have spots and stripes on their tails and on their bodies that are used for camouflage. So it's certainly possible that Thylaco Leo could have had some wild colorations. Um, also ears, uh, it's a predator. And most of the time when it's depicted, artists will give it cat-like ears because of the nickname uh, marsupial lion. But since it did come from the opossum and kangaroo family, it is possible that Thylaco Leo could have had gigantic kangaroo ears. That's a depiction you don't see ever. Um, it is possible, uh, but it's not likely. So that's Thylaco Leo. I hope you enjoyed learning about this amazing predator today. And I uh, hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel and watch for more videos about amazing extinct animals that you haven't even heard of.